so glad that you could join us again for another World Changers Bible Study. It's always good to have you join with us as we look at God's Word together. And if it's the first time that you're joining us, welcome. And I want to encourage you to go to our YouTube channel or Facebook page and look for Church of God Silver Sands and check out what we have been doing. We have been into some very interesting series um, as we look at God's Word. And so I want to encourage you to go back and to look at some of what we did. If you are joining this series for the first time, uh, we are into part three of a series on the well-dressed Christian, um, looking at a text in Ephesians 6 um, from verse 10 to verse 18. And I just want to take the time today to read that text for us again um, as we consider the whole armor of God being clothed in God's full armor. So let's read from Ephesians 6 from verse 10. It says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Therefore, Take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand therefore, having your longings girt about with truth, having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. And watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Uh, brethren, we are in spiritual warfare. And that's what this series is about. It's about breaking it down, helping us to have a good understanding of the battle that we're in and the tools that are available to us um, from the hand of Almighty God. I know that there are many times when we mention spiritual warfare, but we don't delve into what it really means. I know that there are those who have some way out their views and um, will make you think that um, you're not really involved in spiritual warfare unless you do X or you do Y. I want to say that if you are a child of God, you are involved in spiritual warfare. In fact, I would go further to say that even before you were a child of God, you were involved in spiritual warfare, just that you were fighting on the wrong side. But now we are on the winning side with Jesus. We have switched masters. We've switched allegiance. We've switched armies. And now we are fighting in the army of the Lord. Now, this text is one that we very often will mention. We'll talk about things, but we don't always delve into it and study it. And that's why I want us to take some time during this series to look um, in an in-depth way into the whole idea of the armor of God. Now, in our very first session, we established that as Christians, yes, we are involved in spiritual warfare. Um, again, if you haven't seen um, session one, part one in this series, you can go back because it would give some perspective to even what we are doing this evening. Um, we, we said that in our own strength, we are inadequate for the devices of the enemy. But Almighty God does not leave us defenseless. He gives us tools that we need for victory. Um, and so this is what we call the armor of God. That which clothes us and allows us to be able to win in that spiritual battle that we're in. And so Paul, he, he was in prison when he wrote the book um, to Ephesians. Um, he was in a Roman jail and he observed soldiers as they worked. It, it was obvious that Paul would be seeing soldiers because um, they, they took rounds in guarding him. They, he, he, was, he was guarded all day and all night. And so he saw Roman soldiers. They were always in his line of vision. And I believe that as Paul observed these soldiers at work, that God was able to drop something into his spirit that allowed him to be able to make this analogy with the Roman soldier and his armor and his battle with the Christian and the armor of God and the spiritual fight that we are in. 
And so Paul is saying that in the same way that the Roman soldier prepared for a battle by putting on his armor, so we as the people of God prepare for battle by putting on our armor. Now, in our last session, we, we looked at the belt of truth. Um, the fact that we are not fully ready for battle until we put our belts on. And we said that especially for the male, um, unless you buckle your belt when you're leaving home, you're not fully ready. And so we are saying that the Christian soldier um, needs to have his belt on. And the, the belt of truth we discovered was a very, very important piece of the armor. Um, it held all the other pieces of armor that were attached to the soldier's body in place. They were all attached to this belt. And so this belt kept the rest of the armor in place. That's very important. It allowed for free movement of the soldier so that um, the rest of the armor didn't shift position. It didn't move around as the soldier moved from place to place. So it kept them in place and it allowed um, free movement for the soldier. We also said that that belt had some metal straps at the front of it um, that hung down and they were able to protect some vulnerable areas of the soldier's body. And we said that just like the soldier strapped the belt around his waist, we are to strap truth around our loins like a belt so that we fight, first of all, using the word of God. If we are going to fight spiritual battles, the word of God will be important for us. And we looked at the fact that Jesus, in fighting his spiritual battles, he utilized the word of God. It is written. Now, the second piece of the armor of God mentioned by Paul in Ephesians 6 is the breastplate of righteousness. That's where we are going this evening, the breastplate of righteousness. Um, so we have two interesting words here in this phrase, breastplate and righteousness. We're going to look at each of those words um, and we're, we're going to discover some truths from God's word, even as we look at these two words. Now, the breastplate um, was the largest piece of the armor that was actually attached to the body of the soldier. It was the largest piece of his equipment that was attached to his body. And this portion of the armor was there to protect the soldier's heart and lungs and other vital organs of the soldier. If you think of where a breastplate would be, um, this breastplate protected um, parts of the soldier's body like his heart and his lungs and other vital organs. Th these are organs that are not seen on the outside but operate on the inside. But if these organs are damaged in war, it could result in death for the soldier. And so the breastplate serve as the protection for some of the most important, the vital parts of the soldier's body. So it meant that the soldier would not go into war without his breastplate on. If he did, he would be vulnerable to um, the attack of the enemy and this could result in instant death for the soldier. Now this breastplate was made with flexible pieces of metal that overlapped and, and it was strapped um, around the soldier's body, his entire upper body, his torso was covered by this breastplate from his waist up to his shoulders um, would have been covered with this breastplate. Um, it was the kind of armor, I believe, that gave the soldier some confidence and some assurance as he went into battle. And soldiers in that day did not only have to deal with flaming arrows coming from a distance, but sometimes they had to deal with close range, hand-to-hand -hand combat with knives and swords and so having on this breastplate would give considerable protection for the soldier in battle. So that's the breastplate. It was a very important piece of armor. And, and a soldier wouldn't dare go into battle without having his breastplate on. Now the second word we have in that phrase is the word righteousness. The breastplate of righteousness. Um, and righteousness is an important an interesting word. Um, it comes from the Greek word diakosune. Diakosune. Um, and diakosune is a word that means 
the state of him who is as he ought to be. So when you are righteous, it is saying that you are in the state that you ought to be in. Um, another expression of diakosune is the condition that is acceptable to God. So you are in the state that you ought to be in, the condition that you ought to be in. It's a condition that is acceptable to God. Now, righteousness is one of those things that's often debated and, and we get into tangles about what it means to be righteous. Um, the Bible clearly defines righteousness as something that the people of God should pursue. 2 Timothy 2 verse 22, it says that we should pursue righteousness. Yet, we are told in scripture that we are unable to produce it. We are to pursue it, but we can't produce it. So how do we become righteous? How do we get righteousness? I want to say to us today that our righteousness is imputed to us from Jesus through the atoning work that he accomplished on the cross of Calvary. In other words, we are not righteous in ourselves. We are righteous in Christ. We couldn't produce it. In fact, in Isaiah 64 verse 6, it says that our righteousness, our self-righteousness, is as filthy rags. We, we, it's worthless. It's worthless. And I want to say to us that in this spiritual battle that we're in, our righteousness, our self-righteousness is useless. We can't fight the battle um, with that. But we need to understand that our righteousness is in Christ Jesus. Philippians 1.11 highlights the fact that Christ died on the cross and accomplished this for us. And, and in 1 John 1, verse 9, it says, If we confess our sins, he, Jesus, is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. In other words, making us righteous in the sight of God. Um, so we are cleansed from everything that makes us unrighteous. In other words, when we confess our sins um, in the presence of God, the work that he did on Calvary is sufficient to make us righteous. Very important for us. So Christ produced it for us. So if we're going to be righteous, then we need to pursue Christ because he is our righteousness. We pursue Christ-likeness. We seek the character of God in our lives. In other words, we cannot manufacture righteousness by conformity. Um, you know, conforming to um, this way of living or that way of living is not going to produce righteousness. But when we are transformed, when we come to Christ and we confess our sins, um, when we fall at his feet and we allow um, the work that he did on the cross of Calvary to transform our lives, then we are empowered to walk in righteousness. So it's from a place not of conformity, but from a place of transformation. We receive the power to walk above the flesh and its desires. We receive the power to walk in holiness. And that's what righteousness is. It is right living before God. Um, and, and we said, yes, that people have lots of different ideas about righteousness, but we need to understand that righteousness is something that we are not something that we did, something that we become by virtue of being in Christ. We are made righteous in him. We don't achieve righteousness by our good works. Righteousness then affects what we do. Um, but what we do doesn't make us righteous. So, so we're saying that we can't achieve being righteous by doing enough good works. But when we come to Christ and we accept his work in our lives, he, he is our righteousness. And when we are in him, we are righteous in him. And as a result of being in him, we will then um, do the good works that are required of the righteous life. We will want to live holy lives before God. Um, so we don't give ourselves the righteousness, but we live it out by the power of Christ 
in our lifestyles, it is seen because we are in Christ. So we do not clothe ourselves in the fact that we do good works because this is no match for the enemy. We clothe ourselves in Jesus Christ and in his righteousness so that good works flow out of that relationship. Now, there are some very important verses that bear this out. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 21 says, For our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. That sums it up. For our sakes, he made him, Jesus, to be sin, who knew no sin, so that in him, Jesus, we might become the righteousness of God. First Peter 2, verse 24 says, He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds, you have been healed. Very um, important text in, 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 in the context of what we are talking about. He bore our sins in his body on the tree that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. So when we combine these two thoughts, um, the breastplate of righteousness, the breastplate of righteousness, um, there are some things that I would want us to grasp, um, take hold of as we think about our spiritual battle. Breastplate of righteousness. Remembering that we are going into battle. The first thing I want us to um, take hold of and acknowledge is that we need to ensure that we are in relationship with Jesus. We need to ensure in this spiritual battle, that we are in relationship with Jesus. So, so it, having received Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior is important. Just going to church is not enough. And I know that that sounds very basic, but there are lots of people who run um, the risk of falling prey to the enemy because they are not really in relationship with Jesus Christ. Sometimes they're in relationship with the church. They attend church every Sunday, but they're not in relationship with Christ. And what I'm saying is that the first thing you're going to do if you're going to win in this battle is that you need to search your heart. You need to know if you are in right relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Spiritual battles will only be won by those persons who have spiritual life. You are not going to win the battle against an enemy unless you are in relationship with Jesus Christ because he is our righteousness. We don't have righteousness in ourselves by our works, but it is by his work, his work on the cross that we are made righteous and we are righteous when we are in him. In other words, if we are not in him, then we are not righteous. Doesn't matter how often we attend church, unless we are in Christ, we are not righteous. The Bible tells us in John 10 and verse 10, which highlights a part of the whole battle plan of the enemy, the thief comes only to kill, steal, and destroy. Christ came that we might have life and that more abundantly. In other words, everything that the enemy sets out to do in your life is countered by the life that Christ gives to you. So if you don't have that life, it means that the enemy will kill, steal, and destroy your life. Christ came to counter that. Um, the Son of Man was manifest that he might destroy the works of the devil. The Bible also says, He that hath the Son has life. He that has not the Son has not life. So first of all, I'm saying, we need to ensure that we are in a right relationship with Jesus because he is our righteousness and our righteousness is in him. Um, so, so we can't claim to have a breastplate of righteousness, um, to be walking in righteousness so that we are protected from, from, from the, the, the attacks of the enemy unless we are truly in Christ. Now, I'm sure that you know a lot of people who, who can quote scripture well. Um, that doesn't mean that you're in Christ. Okay, there are some people who conveniently will use um, nice motivational 
um, thoughts and scripture verses and so on um, when it works for them. But I'm saying that first of all, we need to be in Christ. We need to be in relationship with him because that's where our righteousness is. The second thing is not only do we need to ensure that we are in relationship with Jesus, but we need to maintain that relationship with Jesus. We need to maintain it. We have to live right. We have to walk in the ways of Christ. We need to be obedient to his word. Here's what the Bible says in Deuteronomy 6 verse 25. And it will be righteousness for us if we are careful to do all this commandment before the Lord our God as he has commanded us. In other words, whatever the Lord is saying to you, you have to be willing to do it. So if we pray and we don't live right, we are not protected. If we, if we get involved in praise and worship, but we don't live right, we are not walking in righteousness, then we are not protected. If we get baptized, but we are not walking in righteousness, then we are not going to be protected in this battle. If we get involved in church work, doesn't matter how much or how deep, but we are not living right, we are not going to be walking in righteousness and then we are not going to have that protection that is necessary in this battle. So when we fail to live lives that are righteous, what's going to happen is that we're going to open doorways for the enemy to come in and wreak havoc in our lives. Now, the thing about the devil is that he tries to get a foothold. He tries to get a foothold but it is not really a foothold that he wants. He wants everything to kill, steal, and destroy. But if he can get a foothold, he'll take it. And then he'll try to work his way from there. So it's important for us as believers that we walk in righteousness, that we don't open doorways in our lives for the enemy to come in. When we do that, we'll find that we're going to start fighting like losers because we're going to be meddling with things that are of the enemy rather than the things that are of God. Um, and so a, a simple battle plan of the enemy is to lure you into sin so that he can manipulate your life. When we walk in righteousness, when we live in righteousness, we allow Jesus to have preeminence in our lives. If we embrace him every day, if we do not counterfeit our faith, but we are genuine then we will live for him. We will walk in righteousness. And yes, we will be protected from the wiles of the enemy. So the breastplate of righteousness is about right living. There is nothing that protects us more thoroughly than this. When we live right, the enemy does not get the foothold that he wants to get in our lives. So Paul calls it the breastplate of righteousness. So, so righteousness, being righteous, being right before God, renders us God's property. And the devil does not have the authority or the right to touch us because we are the people of God. We are covered. We are protected. And so he tries. That's why um, the Bible talks about the schemes, the wells. He, he tries all kinds of devices. And so we need to walk in righteousness so that we are protected from him, obeying the commands of Almighty God. Um, Psalm 103 verse 3, Psalm 106 verse 3 says, How blessed are those who keep justice, who practice righteousness at all times. I, I want to add a third point here, that if we are going to be able to have the whole armor of God, that yes, we need to ensure that we are in right relationship with God. Um, secondly, we need to maintain that relationship and then thirdly, I want to say that we need to guard our hearts against the devil's schemes. We need to ensure we are in Christ. We need to ensure that we are maintaining that relationship with Christ. And we need to also remember to guard our hearts against the devil's schemes. So while the enemy doesn't have the right to just come and to take you out because you're walking in righteousness, because you're God's property, because you're in Christ. Remember that it doesn't stop him from scheming. Remember that you're still human. Remember that you're still subject to temptation. 
And so you need to be careful. That's why Paul says you need to be weary, um, W-A-R-Y, of the devil's devices. Um, you need to think he, he's, he's, he's wily, he is smart. And so as a child of God, you need to guard your heart against his schemes. Remember we said that the breastplate protected the heart, the, the most vital organ. Um, in a Christian understanding, it is the wellspring of life, the heart. And Satan himself is the wellspring of death. And so we need to put on the breastplate of righteousness so that we're able to avoid any blows that the enemy may want to um, throw at us that will lead to spiritual death that comes from sin. So we walk in obedience. We, we actively seek to avoid those things that will ensnare us. We know what can trigger the sins we personally deal with. And so um, there are times when um, going to a certain place can be a challenge for you as a child of God. There are times when um, being with a certain group of people can be a challenge for you as a child of God. There are times when becoming involved in a certain kind of activity can be a challenge for you as a child of God. Guard your heart against the devil's schemes. No matter what the case, we need to avoid anything that can entice us to sin. Sometimes this may make us the odd man out in a crowd. It may cause people to call us a spoil sport. But our spiritual walk is at stake. Our spiritual life is at stake. And so it is better to avoid something that can pull us away from God and expose us to the enemy and, and his devices. It is important that we then not compromise our spiritual safety, but that we walk in obedience to God and we have on the breastplate of righteousness. When we walk in Christ, when we walk according to his precepts, when we live for him, um, when, when we are living in the right way, having a good relationship with Christ, it is as though Christ comes and he clothes us in that protection, um, protecting us from the enemy and from the enemy's devices. So I want to challenge you today to walk in righteousness because when you walk in righteousness, it is like having on a breastplate that protects you from the devices of the enemy. And I want to end with a verse that says, those who hunger and thirst for righteousness will be filled. Those who want to pursue God, want to pursue righteous lives, will find those kinds of lives through Jesus. He'll wash you. He'll cleanse you. He'll save you from your sins. But beyond that, he will protect you because you will be walking in him. You will be clothed in him and it leaves no room for the enemy to have a foothold. You will have the strength to fight and you will be an overcomer because the righteousness of Christ will be your breastplate. Uh, this was so exciting to be able to share this information with you today. Um, I just look forward to the rest of our series as we continue looking at the armor of God. Remember that last time we talked about having our loins girt about with truth. Today we talked about having on the breastplate of righteousness. In our next session, we are going to be talking about having our feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. And then we're going to talk about the shield of faith and the helmet of salvation. We are in for an exciting time in studying the word of God together. So I just want to encourage you um, to be with us again when we study the word of God next. Great that we could have you for a world changers Bible study. Please check us out on Facebook or YouTube, Church of God, Silver Sands. And may God bless you richly. And I look forward to seeing you again.